So today I wanted to look at something a little bit more different, a different kind of topic rather than a specific gadget game kind of thing. And you guys may have noticed me coming out with these videos like once a week or maybe once every two weeks and I intend on keeping these up. Guys, just cut me some slack, I'm just very passionate, I just very much love the anime and the gacha games, like this whole genre, very much all of this culture, although I do recognize that there are like the darker sides to these things. Anyway, back to it. So I think most of you who actually follow this channel will know that Princess Connect got a season two of its anime. And so it was here where I started thinking like, oh wow, there's this gacha game, this IP, this intellectual property that started off as a mobile game actually managed to evolve into an anime. Honestly, that's pretty insane to me. And there are a lot of different intricacies, right? Like what if you go the other way around from anime over to mobile game? We typically call that a cash grab. And so today I wanted to explore this topic, but like before we can get there, I guess we've got to roll our intro. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lace. And today again, we are going to be talking about all of these animes to mobile game relationships. And then also the vice versa, like the intent, all of this money that is being thrown into this industry. And so again, Again, this is going to be very much a generalist video. It is certainly what I came looking for like when I started YouTube. I wanted to do this kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this content. Let me know if you do want to see more and if you haven't done so, subscribe for more. But with all of that being said, the first topic that I do want to explore today is the notion of mobile games making it into an anime. Because generally speaking, right, like when you go from a mobile game to an anime, that's it's not very often that that happens. For a lot of people, anime is actually a way to get a lot of buy-in or it kind of like spread awareness about a particular IP and ultimately it really serves as an ad to sell more manga or more of the light novels. And so that's why I kind of find this pretty cool, right? Because if, for example, we had Precon, which was previously a game being made into an anime, does this mean that the anime is actually advertising for the game or is the game advertising for the anime? Obviously the game came first, right? But then the anime will like, if you're looking to build it into a stronger IP, in my opinion, it's actually quite inconclusive. Like which way do you want to go? Obviously, if your anime pops off, like if you get your high rankings or high popularity, or if you're able to get a lot of people to stream it on like Crunchyroll, Funimation, all of those other anime websites, then in that regard, if you are popping off like Attack on Titan and stuff, you're probably going to be getting a lot of money from like ads or subscriptions or whatever partial payments you get. Very similar to how artists and musicians get like some level of royalty from their Spotify streams. However, on the other hand, if we look at it from like the anime is the advertising component of this relationship, then the prime objective of this anime would be to get more people onto the mobile app, the game, and then spend money there. And honestly, again, at this point, I'm kind of mixed. I'm not sure which one's which, like which one is kind of the dominating the end game. But I guess some could argue that you could look at both of them holistically more as like part of a mixed media production. Another example of this would be this one over here, this IP called Tact Op. And honestly, my guys, I have not actually watched this one, nor have I played the game that uh that hasn't been released yet but this one is essentially what i'm referring to right mixed media project where we have this ip this new ip tacked up and so it had an anime and it's getting a mobile game and then eventually we might see like other stuff like visual novels come out of it maybe even just like some mvs and stuff because this was like a very musical based franchise so this is probably the closest thing that i can describe to say what i'm feeling about these like our oh, pre-con getting bigger with an anime starting originally from a game on the other hand, we have other franchises like Arknights. Like if we think about it, Arknights, spectacular game, but like they're growing into an anime and then potentially they could even go into manga as well as light novels. And then to name a few more, we've also got Dolls Frontline over here as well as Kung Kol. And then now I've gotten up to here, Azura Lane. I do want to say a few things because I do understand that the Azura Lane, this anime was just not very well received. So if I come down to the bottom, I think there are a few, there are a few comments. I'll be honest, this adaptation was terrible. So reading this review was actually another thing that got me thinking about all of this, right? What if the adaptation was terrible? Like, what does that mean for the IP generally? Clearly for Azure Lane, I don't think it really influenced it that much. Like, they still made so much money in the month of December, if you did follow my last video for the revenues. And so if you guys are players of Azure Lane and you did consume this media and you are still playing Azure Lane and spending, I want to know your thoughts on this one here. Anyway, moving through a couple of different ones, we do have the Grand Blue Fantasy and the first one that I 
I actually ever watched Rage of Bahamut. For me personally, Rage of Bahamut was a pretty good anime, like as a standalone piece of media. At that point in time, I actually had no idea, and I only found out like freaking five or eight years later or whatever, that this anime was actually based on a mobile game. But yeah, the reason that I kind of want to say this is because like, and similar to Precon and some of the other animes, it's like, well, is it canonical? Is it not? Is it just purely for fan service? For example, I remember watching through Glam Blue Flannessy, and this GBF anime, I think was very, very fan service -y, especially towards the end of it. Like not to say that it was bad, but when you get towards like the fan service side of it, you leave a couple of like your other viewers kind of going like, what the frick is going on? Like, I don't really want to spoil it. I think it might have been this one over here, episode 12. But essentially what happens is that there is just this like mega threat and all of these characters from nowhere, they're just like coming along. So I suspect people are going to be like, oh, it's this character or, or like, oh, it's that character. And so to be honest, scenes like that kind of left me a little bit confused. And so that's kind of like another challenge that I would say that some of these anime, IP, gacha game, mobile, whatever you can call this, actually has, right? Whereas on the other hand, with Princess Connect and this one over here, to me, this one over here like almost completely deviates from the story that has been told in the game itself. And so whilst that is a concern, I want to come back to Arknights over here because Arknights, I think a lot of people, and I'm sorry for that, but like, thank you, Eric Kwan for the subscribe. But yeah, for this game, Arknights, I think it has a very clear story from the get-go and including all of the side stories as well as the main story, there is very much a lot of material to work with. And so for Arknights, therefore, I think it is going to be very much aligned to what has happened in the game itself. And so therefore, it's kind of like, oh, this character's coming in. Okay, you progress an episode, this character is coming in kind of thing. And so to be honest, I predict this one to be actually quite a good standalone piece of media. Whereas again, like coming back to Grand Blue Fantasy, it really left me quite confused when all these people were just popping up out of nowhere in one episode in the last five minutes, something like that. And so honestly, there are a couple more of these animes or these mobile game based animes, I still don't really know what to call it, that do exist, such as like Tales of Luminaria. So if you guys do remember, we did have this game published, I believe last year in November. And then I only actually recently realized that if I scroll down to the very bottom of this Annie chart here, you'll see that there is a Tales of Luminaria anime as well. And then on top of that, we do also have an Alchemy Stars anime coming up announced at the half year anniversary. I believe at a conference, Tencent has committed about three to four years in growing this IP. And so that again, that just really makes me think, right? Like what exactly does the anime serve as a purpose towards the gacha game? Is it literally as simple as simply being like a medium, a form of advertisement to bring more people onto the mobile game? Or is there something that is a little bit more? Is there actually an end goal to all of this? One of these end goals could be maybe a premium game. So for example, GBF, I think most of you no, this bad boy is actually going to be getting a standalone game, like a JRPG kind of thing. So yeah, lots of things to think about over there. Would love your thoughts about pretty much everything. I know it was very much a vomit this time, but to be honest, I've been mulling over this for a couple of days and I've just been thinking and thinking is like, oh, what exactly does all of this, like, what is the end game? What is the business strategy? Now, the last topic of the day, we come back over here to the Anna chart, AKA just simply a list of all of the different IPs or rather the animes that are airing this season. So from here on out, we are gonna be talking about going from anime over to mobile game. Because generally speaking, the traditional kind of progression is light novel going over to manga, going over to anime, which eventually goes on to like other things which we refer to as like cash grabs, such as mobile games, merchandise, and more. So even just like looking at this list, Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack on Titan, we've got Demon Slayer over here. They certainly have a whole bunch of mobile games coming out. We've got Precon over here. But aside from that, I'm sure I could click into any season. Mushoku Tensei, another one. And then down here, we've got Boku no Hero, which also had a mobile game. And obviously, just to name a few more, we've got like Seven Deadly Sins, Naruto. I don't know how many freaking Naruto games there are, but there are a lot. Bleach, One Piece, Slime, Black Clover, Konosuba, Dragon Ball, like it's endless. So I just wanted to point this one out because like it's very very clear to me for this one like again it's going from light novels visual novels or some kind of source material maybe even web novels to manga to anime to games and then other ways of actually monetizing all of this and i just really wanted to point this out because i want to contrast it again back to the whole going from gacha over to anime kind of topic that we've been talking about from the very start at the end of the day the goal is clear right to make as much money as you can and so again that progression all the way up to the merchandise as well as the gacha games and other ways ways of monetizing, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I'm not even sure how many ReZero collabs there are. There's probably a freaking five going on right now. But yeah, as you guys can tell, I think like the confusion is coming from the fact that it's kind of going backwards, right? But yeah, otherwise, I think that's it for this topic over here.
video. I know it was quite a lot to digest and it is quite different to what we normally talk about on this channel, but hopefully you guys do understand what I'm kind of trying to say. And honestly, I talk about this because I do want to know what you guys think. And so I guess there are a couple of different secret questions here. First of all, let's start with an easy one. Are there any of these gacha game animes that are coming out that you're really hyped for? For me, although I don't play it anymore, it's probably Arknights. Although I actually like Alchemy Stars a lot more, this is starting to look really slice of a lifey. And so therefore, for me, I am looking forward to the Arknights anime. Then the next thing would be, well, like, what exactly is the purpose of creating an anime for a gacha game? That broadening of a franchise or perhaps literally just serving as an advertising vehicle? And then the last question I do want to ask, because I've honestly been like pretty mean about it, but I do want to ask, like, are there any animes that did get turned into gacha games, which you feel are not really like 100% cash grab it, you know? So if I remember correctly, Dotcom Battle is one where a lot of the players are actually really in love with like the game and the devs itself. I think, I think it's very, very generous, but honestly, that's the only one I know. And so if you guys do have any answers to all of these questions, drop them down in the comments below. And I do hope that you guys would be willing to partake in this kind of discussion, right? Like all these mixed media projects and animes and stuff, because I don't know about you guys, but like all of this is really, really interesting to me. And so I would really appreciate it if you did drop your thoughts down in the comments below, because it means you've made it up until the end of the video as well. And so therefore, thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, consider leaving a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, let me know down in the comments as well, because like this is still a work in progress, but also please consider subscribing as well. But otherwise, that's going to bring us to the end of it. And so therefore, as your boy, uh, as your boy Aaron once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.